Well, we're waiting on the rest of the parts for the Turbo 400, so we might as well turn the boost up, right? Stick around. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today, well, we're actually installing a new blower pulley on the supercharger for a couple of reasons. Uh, but before we get into that, thanks to all the new subscribers out there. Sorry I missed the live show on Thursday. I'll make it up to you guys. And of course, always thanks to our sponsors. Check the description down below for the links for that. Today we are installing a 3-2 pulley one of these nice units from 928 Motorsports, I'll put a link down below, with the SureGrip coating on it. I don't know if you can really see that. Let me put that in front of my face. But there is a very small coating on this. It's a process. I'm not sure how they do it. I don't care. It's supposed to keep belt slip from happening. And I'll show you a log here in a bit that shows you where you can see belt slip on a centrifugal supercharger setup like this. You make boost with RPM as the RPM goes up. The boost goes up, and it's not always a linear representation. You know, the boost curve's not always going to directly follow the RPM. You might develop boost faster or boost slower. So if your RPM looks like this and you have a smaller pulley, you might get more boost out of it. If you have a larger pulley at lower boost, you, know, you might get less. But it should be an uh, even build. Like, there should be a rise over run slope that is consistent at 1,000 RPMs, 2,000, 3,000, and so on, where you can calculate out. If you know what the boost is at three grand, you should be able to double that at six grand, ideally. Now, whenever you start getting into belt slip, you'll see that curve that might be very linear in building at that rate start to fall off at the top end. If that happens on a centrifugal supercharger, you have belt slip. And in fact, here's the belt that I took off of there. And I don't know if you're really going to be able to see it, but this has glazing on it. Uh, let me see if I can find a really good spot, but hopefully you can see the glazing down in here where it's shiny, where this thing has slipped, got hot and started to melt the belt. In fact, whenever I melt the belt, whenever I took this belt off the blower, there were chunks of rib stuck in the blower itself. And you can see spots on here where it has jumped uh, just because the motor's spinning so fast. And that's really what you run into on these uh, bigger blowers that require more horsepower to, dr to drive them. We're running the Stage 2, which has a dedicated eight rib setup, has its own uh, pulley on the crank, on the balancer, and then it doesn't share anything with the accessories, you know, the alternator, and uh, the water pump like the standard bracket does, which is a six rib. This is an eight rib setup. So you get uh, the extra two ribs, but on top of it, it wraps around the pulley more. And we have adjustments to some of the other pulleys, the idlers, so we can try and get as much grip on the belt, on the pulley, uh, by maintaining the highest level of tension on there. So I've got to get a couple things out of the way so we can swap the pulley out. But we're also going over to a fleet runner belt that are a little bit more resilient. They're about 60, 70, 80 bucks. The greenbacks, if you've seen high horsepower supercharged belts still being ran off belts, you're normally going to see these greenbacks because they're, as I said, more resilient than the standard automotive style that we have on there now. These are a little bit easier to find. You can generally just go down to your auto parts store, find the standard black eight rib belts down there. Once you know your belt length, finding the greenbacks, you might be able to find these, uh, but it's a little bit harder to find specific lengths. This is a 710. I think that's what we have on there right now. So this belt might just be a hair long because we're going from a 3.4 down to a 3.2 pulley. We'll see. I wish they'd mark these pulleys though. Uh, 928, if you're watching, please stamp these pulleys with the diameter. That way, if you have multiple, you can see which ones they are, but you can tell it is a double keyed pulley, which is nice. Uh, on an F1, you really need the double key pulleys. So let me get this stuff kind of out of the way and we're going to start this swap process. Okay, so this belt is the one, it's been on there for not too long, but you can see here, this belt doesn't have any glazing, so it hasn't been slipping. Another telltale sign is if you look around the head unit itself, you will see dust around the pulley. That is the that black dust is literally these belts de de uh, deteriorating 
I don't know why that's such a hard word to say, but that is the belt deteriorating. So if you see a lot of dust building up around the, the pulley on the blower unit itself, that's another good indication. Boost is always the best indication though, especially on these centrifugal ones. Uh, if it's falling off, you get belt slip. So let's take a look at kind of what's going on underneath here. Okay, so we got it off uh, and there is some black dust on here. You probably can't really see it, but that was from the previous belt. And once I get this pulled off, I had to clean this thing up, but you can still see remnants of the last belt down in the grooves. So I need to grab my strap wrench and uh, yeah, then we'll swap over. Hopefully we can easily figure out the offset, but we may go ahead and grab the pulley aligner and throw on here and make sure that this thing, cause these 928s, uh, they don't machine these for a standard, uh, well, I think they're machined for standard offset. So if you need more offset for your setup, whenever you buy one of these, you have to buy a spacer kit. Luckily, as said, on the Silverado, they're all standard offsets as far as I know. It was on the stage one bracket, it is on the stage two bracket. So just keep that in mind if you're looking at going to one of these pulleys. Okay, so we got our strap wrench on here. Let's make sure I got the right wrench. I probably did not. Okay, it's 5 5.8. That wrench is probably not big enough to break it loose. Oh, well, let's go ahead and put this on backwards because any person knows that the first time you put a strap wrench on, it's got to be backwards or else it doesn't work right. Uh-oh, I got it right the first time. Okay, that actually did come loose pretty easily. Uh, very interesting. For some reason, on this head unit, the pulleys like to get stuck on there. So uh, just ignore me whenever I go to pry this thing loose. Don't do that. It's hard on the seals. <laughs> so let me see. Yep, she's in there. Uh, I'm probably going to have to grab a screwdriver. As I said, maybe don't do this on your own setup. You can feel that shaft playing. Ugh, so terrible. I need to figure out why that is. She really tight for this one. Okay. Got her off, didn't lose the keys for once. That's always a good sign. And if I can get the keys out of here, there's one. Where's number two? Okay, so I believe these are machined flat, so it shouldn't matter. Let's go ahead and put a key in one of the races. Oh, that one's tight. Might have to file that. Oh, I got it. About to say, you may have to file this one out a little bit because it is very tight. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can slide the other one in. There we go. Okay. Okay, I've got my Deco pulley alignment tool here, which is literally just a laser. Uh, there's a couple other things that come with it. There's a wear gauge for belts in here. There's a tension tool that you put your finger in and you push down on the belt and it'll show you where the tension's, who cares? Big thing is, this is the laser, has a trigger toggle switch and it shoots a straight line. I don't know if you're really gonna be able to see it. Maybe you can see it right there, but it shoots a straight line out. Then you also have, this other one that can go on your other pulley to see that it's gonna line up. You want it going straight down the middle of that. Um, so it's magnetic, but this is an aluminum pulley. So of course, I'm just gonna set it on top of it. And then I'll put this one in the same grooves and we're good. It lines right up down the middle. This pulley is almost too small. Okay, this may be worthless and really hard to see, but down here is the uh, unit that we're shooting the laser at. We're going to put this thing in the same grooves that we put that one on. And if we get it lined up just like that, you will see. And as I said, this pulley's just a, a smidge too small, but we get it pushed down in there perfectly. It will show that we are aligned. There we go. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good indication. I'll see if I move my arm out of the way, but there it is. It's going down the middle of that one down there on our crank pulley. So our belts are gonna be in line. 
We have good alignment. This tool, I don't remember how much it costs. I'll try and look it up and post it down in the description. I used it a lot initially on my stage one bracket because I always had belt alignment issues on that one. This seemed to help me get that sorted out. I've had no belt alignment issues on this stage two setup. Now, the other thing we can, these two idler pulleys can be adjusted uh, from the looks at it. Uh, maybe this bottom one can be adjusted down another notch. This one's already in its tightest position. So moving them down makes them tighter. Uh, specifically, no, moving this one up makes it tighter because we come under, over, around. Oh yeah, then we go back down. So moving this one down makes it tighter. Moving the ribbed one down makes it tighter also. So I will double check it. And it's a 9 16 I believe, yep. Little trip, a uh, little trick that I figured out on these, by the way. Just go ahead and uh, try and run these things around the blower pulley by pulling the idler back. And then the last one you want to do is this smooth idler. Okay, that is too short. I tell you what, I'm rather surprised. Maybe I had a 715 or a 716 belt on there beforehand, so I did not need to move that. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to move this one up a spot. Make sure, well, let me make sure that I wasn't able to get that on there because it wasn't seated on the crank pulley. Looks like that might have been the case. Oh, yep, that's exactly what it was. So, wasn't wasn't seated down on the crank pulley. Take the tension off, tighten this one back down. And, yeah, we got a lot of tension on this belt. Which is nice because, you know, belts, they expand a little bit as you run them. So, we've got some room with our spring idler here to come over, keep tension consistent on this thing. We got a nice tension on it. This is going to be perfect. Uh, for once, I'm taking a belt off that can be reused. And... It was a 710. Okay, it was a 710. So, probably a good thing that we did uh, make the adjustment. If you try to run these belts and then put them over the pulley last, you're going to have a hard time. Go for the one with the smallest lip. It'll make your life easier. That's where it was literally just eating the belt. It was heating the belt up, melting it. It was getting stuck in the grooves of the pulley. Belt slip. So, I got two logs pulled up here. One of them is from whenever I first started thinking that I had belt slip, and then the next log is from whenever I put the next belt on that was uh, half an inch shorter, allowed me to get more tension on the pulley. And so if you look right here, we're at 4382 RPM and we're making 16.19 PSI. And I knew that that was low for this RPM. In fact, I'm not even sure if we look at the next one, we're at the same RPM and we're making 17.57. So in between the two, we picked up uh, 1.25 PSI. And this one might actually still be a little bit low. If I scroll through here, uh, we are getting up to 21. 21 is about the peak, but I was seeing peak, uh, I believe, sooner than that. Let's go way back into the logs real quick, and we'll go back to some of the early runs. Okay, so here's another early log that we got on here, and you can see by the time we make the same amount of boost, look, we're at making 20.59 at 4,800 on this one. We're barely making 19 and a half at 5,000. So good indications about slip. Uh, we will have to see what this new pulley does, so stick around. I'll do a review on that in a later date on a future video, but for now, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Want to go through kind of how to spot some of these things. Uh, you know, belt slip is a big problem that we all deal with on centrifugal superchargers whenever we start making serious amounts of power, and so I'm anxious to get out, get some miles, get this belt stretched, uh, see how the boost curve looks. Uh, we'll be picking up a little bit of boost, not a whole lot. We're only going from the 3.4 down to the 3.2, but we'll pick up a little bit. And the question is whether or not we see any of that fall off uh, towards the end. Uh, this one, this log, we're not having a lot of fall off on this, and it looks pretty good. If you follow the boost curve versus RPM, uh, if you look at this one, it looks pretty much the same. And that's the nice thing about these centrifugal superchargers. Look at the green line versus the red line. That is our boost building with our RPM. 
in a nice, steady, linear fashion. That's what we're looking for. So I got to get back to it. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. And remember, ABT, always be tuning.